I was watching this movie like, ooh, ooh. There's, there's definitely some brutal stuff in this one. Keanu Reeves returns in the third installment of the John Wick franchise. So far, this series has had two solid entries. This time, John is in a race against the clock to find safety after there's a $14 million bounty put on his head, and now he's on the run from the whole Assassin Underground. For the last few years, John Wick has been a standout in the action genre. Not only are the fights brutal, but they're also well choreographed and very gruesome. So what worked? As always, one of the strongest points of this franchise is the action. I think that the fight scenes, again, were well choreographed, look very brutal, but also they added a lot of creativity and found new ways to spice up the action. So not only are you seeing gunfights, but you're also seeing people with swords, you're seeing people using objects around them, you're seeing also a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat. So it does still feel fresh, even though it's the third installment of the movie. Another cool thing about the action in this movie is that John Wick isn't the only one that gets to have fun. You get a lot more people in the mix showing off their moves, and you even get to see the dogs fight, which is pretty cool. Another great thing about the fight scenes in this movie is that they're very easy to follow. Uh, nowadays in Hollywood, sometimes you tend to see too many cuts. Um, the biggest example that you usually see is Liam Neeson and Taken trying to jump over a fence, where you see every single aspect and it cut to like 10 different cameras. But this movie, which it does very smartly, is stick to a minimum amount of cameras, a minimum amount of cuts, so that you get to see all the action, you get to follow it clearly, and you get to see all the brutal parts too, very up close and personal. Another thing I liked about this movie was the general look of it. It had a lot of very vivid colors that pop on the screen, and they also had a lot of framing that they played around with uh, using different like walls, hallways, glass. They had a lot of playing with perspective, which really kept it interesting to look at. So even if you weren't totally invested in the talking or the action, you still had something really great to look at. I would say the performances were generally strong. Of course, Keanu Reeves kills it as John Wick. Uh, not only does he do well with the action, but he also does well with the emotional parts. He has such a tragic story. No matter what he does, he just wants a peaceful life. And no matter what, someone comes at him, they kill his dog, they burn his house. No matter what, he just can't catch a break. And I think Keanu Reeves does a good job of balancing both the action, but also the emotional weight of the character. You still feel very bad for him, and you just want him to find that peaceful life no matter what. And things don't always seem to work out that way. Other performances that stood out to me were Lawrence Fishburne as the Bowery King. He was very charismatic. He played off well with John Wick's very serious, like, I'm just trying to get out of here, versus Lawrence Fishburne's just goofy. He kind of like roasts people as he's helping them out, which was kind of funny. Mark Dacascos as Zero was also a very fun character to see on screen. Uh, every movie you see this one character that keeps coming back to get John Wick, and I think he did well in this one. You see a lot more sword play, like kind of ninja action with him, which I thought was pretty cool. Personality-wise, he played off well with John Wick. They were very witty, and he, a lot of the jokes came from him, which I wasn't expecting, and I think that worked pretty well. In the movie, we also get to see more of the inner workings of the High Table, which is the governing body that oversees all these assassins that are out in the world. We see this repeated theme of consequences, and through this character, the, how do you say it, the adjuncticator? I think, that word, every time they said it, I was like, wait, what? But anyway, we see the characters deal a lot with consequences. The adjudicator, played by Asia Kate Dillon, also helps push this theme of consequences. She comes as a representative for the high table, and she comes to each character or some of the main leaders in this world, telling them, you messed up with John Wick. And so you see how each of them have to pay for the consequences of what they did in this movie and in previous movies. One thing I think that could have been improved in this movie is the pacing. There is a lot of fight scenes, like I said, but some of them I feel like ran a little too long. There were points where I was sitting there like, okay, wait, why are they fighting again? I think if some of those were cut down just a little bit, it could have made it a little more concise. And then overall, that would have shortened the runtime. It's two hours, but I feel like it drags. It's not like other moods I've seen this year. For example, like Avengers Endgame, which was like three hours, but it didn't feel like it at all because the pacing was so well done. So I think this movie could have also benefited from a similar style where even though it was a lot of high action, but also a lot of slow parts of people talking, I think all of it could have been condensed or cut down so that it was just a little more focused. I also wish some actors got more to do in this movie. For example, Jason Montezoukas, who we've seen in Brooklyn Nine-Nine and The Good Place, he did have a little bit of something to do. He was kind of pushing the story on the TikTok. I mean, actually, that's all he really did. He just said TikTok. But I wish he had more to do, because in both 
Brooklyn Nine Nine and The Good Place. We get to see his acting range. He's very plays very crazy characters, and I think it would have been a great addition if we had more of that in this movie to play off of Lawrence Fishburne and Keanu Reeves. The verdict. I think John Wick Chapter Three is a solid installment to this franchise. I wouldn't say it's my favorite out of the three so far, but I think it's still a good popcorn flick. If you like loud, gritty action, then I think you'll love this. But also, if you're just a fan of the franchise, I think it's still worth going to see in theaters. So I would still recommend it. So what did you think of my review? Do you agree with what I said? Let me know in the comments below. I do want to do more movies this summer. I will definitely go into movies a lot. So if there's other movies you want to see me review, let me know also in the comments. Follow me on Instagram at Cherryberry Photography, Twitter at The Cherryberry, and check out my website, all the links below. Like, comment, subscribe. I will see you in the next review.